Okay, so in this problem we're told the block of glass n equals 1.5 shown in the cross section in the figure is surrounded by air. A ray of light enters the block at its left hand face with an incident angle theta 1 and re-emerges into the air from the right hand face directed parallel to the block's base. Determine theta 1. So I went ahead and drew uh, the diagram from the book. Essentially we have this uh, ray of light. We know it's going to enter here uh, and it's going to travel like this and it's going to exit the block out here. And so uh, we're told that this ray of light is going to be parallel uh, to the bottom here. And so in order to solve this problem, right, in order to find theta 1, what we're going to do is start on the right side of this block and we're going to solve for the angles. Uh, and then basically with that, if we can figure out what this angle is right here, I'll call it theta 2. We can use Snell's law uh, in order to solve for theta 1. Right, so what is Snell's law? So Snell's law is n1 times the sine of theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2. So uh, keep in mind n is the index of refraction. So we know on uh, the outside it's just air. So it's n equals 1 out here, right? And then on the inside it's n equals 1.5. And then your theta are just your angle of incidence or angle of refraction. And what we're trying to find is this angle of incidence here, where it enters. So the first thing we need to do is start on this side. And what I'm going to explain is a few things first. So if you imagine this beam is going out like this, and then if we draw this, uh, just a straight line like this right here. Let me actually draw it straight up. There we go. So I know that this is parallel to the bottom. So this straight line is going to form a 90 degree angle right here. And so this means this is also 45 degrees, right? Since this is, par or since this is perpendicular to this line right here, uh, I know these have to add up to 90, meaning this angle right here is 45 degrees. And so why do we need to know that? Well, if this is 45 degrees, okay, that means this is also 45 degrees. Now, how do we know that? Well, I know that this right here forms a triangle. And I know that a triangle has to add up to 180. So this is why it's 45, because 45 plus 45 plus 90 is 180. So now that I have that labeled, I'm going to show you another thing here. So what I'm going to do is draw a line that is normal or perpendicular to the surface right here. So the surface that our light is exiting, right, this ray of light. So if I go ahead and draw that, I'm drawing it perpendicular, and I'm going to draw it right here. Okay, what else do we know? So we know that this angle is 45 degrees. I know that this angle is going to be 90 degrees. The reason that is, is this is normal or perpendicular to this line, which means that this forms a 90 degree angle. So if this is 90 degrees, that means this right here has to be 45 degrees, okay? So that means that is 45 degrees. Uh, let me actually redraw that a bit better. Right, because these two have to add up to 90. Okay? And so now that we know that, let me draw another line. Uh, I'm going to draw it dash just to make it a bit easier to see. Uh, and then let me zoom out here. And I'm going to connect it like this. So uh, what we want here is notice that this thing right here, this angle, this is going to be 90 degrees since this is uh, perpendicular like this. If we can figure out what this angle is on this triangle, I can solve for theta 2. So well, my next mission is going to be to figure out what this angle is based on all this information we're given here. So I know that if you look at this, this is 90 degrees. Okay, this is 90 degrees. And based off that, I know that this right here is 45 degrees, which also means this is 45 degrees. Because this is perpendicular, meaning this is 90 degrees. So I know that this right here is 45 since these three add up to 180. And then this one is 45 since these two have to add up to 90. So what I want to do is, if I can figure out what this angle is, I'll call it theta... Um, 
we'll call it theta 3. If I can figure out what theta 3 is, that's going to allow me to solve for theta 2, which allows me to use Snell's law to solve for theta 1. So how do we find theta 3 given this information here? Well, we're going to use Snell's law again, but just in this scenario. So in this case, I'm going to say n3 sine of theta 3 equals n4 sine of theta 4. And so if I look at here, we should know what Snell's law. Basically, it just tells us how the light is going to bend as a result of traveling from one medium uh, to another with different index of refractions. So the way it works is theta 3 and theta 4 are your angle of incidence and angle of refraction. So the angle of incidence is the angle between the beam of light to the normal of the surface it um, is entering. So this is our surface. The line that's normal to it is this line which we drew right here, right? This white line. So the angle between the beam of light, the pink, and the normal line is uh, theta 3, our angle of incidence. And then our angle of refraction, uh, in this equation it's theta 4, is the angle between the normal and it's leaving, right? So in this case, it's 45 degrees. And so notice we have theta four now. And then N four and N three are just the index of refraction for each material. So we know the beam is starting inside of it. So N is gonna be 1.5, that's your N three. And then your N four is gonna be uh, the index of refraction for the outside material. We know on the outside, it's surrounded by air. Therefore, N4 is just 1. So what you should recognize is we have everything here to solve for theta 3, which is what we want, our angle of incidence uh, right there. So if I plug these in, N3 was the index of refraction inside, so times the sine of theta 3, equals N4, which is the index of refraction outside. That's just air. So 1 times anything is just that thing times the sine of our angle of refraction, right, which is this angle, the angle between the normal uh, and our light beam, so 45 degrees. So now what I can do is solve for theta 3. So I would divide both sides by 1.5. So we get the sine of 45 divided by 1.5. Then what you're going to do is to get rid of sine, you take the arc sine of both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. And you'll end up with that. So let's plug this into our calculator. The sine of 45 divided by 1.5. And we're going to take the arc sine of that value. So you're going to get theta 3 is equal to 28.1, we'll say 13 degrees. So now that we have theta 3, right, which is this value right here, 28.13 degrees. Now what I can do is solve for theta 2, uh, since I know that all the angles in this triangle, right, this angle, plus 90, plus these two angles added up, uh, since they form this angle in the triangle, uh, is going to add up to 180. So we can solve for theta 2. So I know theta 2 plus uh, 90, plus these two added up since they form one angle in the triangle. So it's 28.15 plus 45, this is all going to be equal to 180. So if I wanted to solve for theta 2, I would just do 180 and then subtract these from both sides. And uh, yeah, so let's see what it is. So 180 minus all these values, you're going to get 16.87. Degrees. So now we have theta 2, 16.87 degrees. And as I said in the beginning, with this angle, we can use Snell's law uh, in order to solve for theta 1. So we're basically going to do the same thing we did uh, over here, but just with these values instead. So let's go ahead and start that. So we're, we're starting, uh, whenever you use the 1, uh, you talk about your initial. So we're starting on the outside and we're entering this side. So our N1 
we're starting on the outside, so it's 1 since it's air, times the sine of theta 1, which is your angle of incidence, right? The line that is parallel to the surface you're entering, which is right here, this line is parallel, or sorry, perpendicular to it, right? The line that is perpendicular to it, the angle between that and the beam, that's our theta 1, which we're solving for, equals uh, N2, which is the index of refraction of the material you're entering, which is 1.5, times the sine of uh, theta 2, which is the angle between the beam and the normal line again. So your beam in this case is uh, going this way. The normal is right here. And the angle between them is what we just found, 16.87. So this tells us the sine of theta 1 equals 1.5 sine of 16.87. So to solve for theta 1, we would just take the arc sine of both sides to cancel this. So let's just write that down. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and see what this is now. So. 1.5 times the sine of 16.87. Uh, and then you're going to take the arc sine of that. So what you will get is a final answer of theta 1 equals 25.81. Uh, you can just round. I'm going to round to the tenths place. So 25.8 uh, degrees. So this angle right here, or your angle of incidence, of your beam here uh, is 25.8 degrees. Uh, but yeah, so just a quick overview. So the main trick to this problem is really figuring out this angle trick right here. Um, so I knew if I wanted to solve for theta 2, because I could solve for this part using Snell's law, I knew that. So if I could find theta 2, then I would be set. How would I find theta 2? Uh, I guess the main part is recognizing that this right here forms a triangle. I know that this is 90, so I can figure out what this angle is. Uh, I'll be set. And then you just had to do some tricks here, noticing that this is 45 degrees. The line perpendicular here is 45. Uh, and then you can just use Snell's law again to solve for theta 3. Uh, but yeah, so just using Snell's law in a couple different cases to actually get your final answer. Uh, but yeah, so 25.8 degrees, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.